We're here, we're closing out the Skywalker saga. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. How does it feel? I don't know. It's been such a beautiful, wonderful experience that I do feel really lucky to have been a part of. And I can't believe it's ending. I, I don't even know if I, I don't think I, I registered that it is ending. I think I just sort of am living in, I'm trying to live in the moment, if that makes sense. I want to experience every little thing. When you were stepping back into this, was there any hesitation? Was there any kind of hesitancy in terms of just like, okay, what kind of, you know, what are the fans going to say this time? Like, what, what's the reaction going to be? I think that as an actor, <laughs> I always laugh when I talk about what it is to be an actor, because I think half of an actor's job is just to, like, stay sane. <laughs> and How I do think, you stay sane? Uh, truly, yeah, yeah. truly. And what that means is, it's interesting, because Last Jedi was my first big movie. It was the first thing that made me able to afford living on an actor's wage, if that made sense. Like I was not a working actor before. I was like in little things, but I was working a day job and auditioning for things. So this sort of balance between creativity and vulnerability and having an audience was something I didn't understand or anticipate. So this time around, I think I was very aware of that, but in a good way. I've definitely learned a lot of things from a lot of people. In this role, you have seen some of the best of fandom, Star Wars Celebration, the standing ovation. Yeah. Um, and I think you've seen some really dark sides of fandom. Mm -hmm. What has this experience taught you? The good things are such th that, you know, people care and love this thing and have opinions about this thing because it means so much to them. And to be a part of something that has that sort of following is incredible. And when it comes to the other side of things, I mean, we're living in such a weird time and the world is really divisive right now. I think that that, for me, that experience was sort of an example of that, if that makes sense. She's also become a symbol for oppressed peoples, for working people. Did you ever kind of see her as that way? She was the working man. She was not a glorious pilot. She didn't have a lightsaber. She wasn't a fighter. She was just one of the people that was necessary to help make this movement move forward. And there are so many people like that in the world today. Anytime you see someone who is a, a leader or who's the face of a company, they have so many people that are helping them do that thing. And Rose was that to me. How much of that experience is drawn from being a child of immigrants, being Asian American? Oh, so much. Her whole backstory about her parents being from this war-torn planet and her and her sister being the only surviving members, like that's definitely my parents' story. My parents are both war refugees from Vietnam, um, had to leave their country and come to a new one, didn't have their parents with them, didn't see their parents for 20 plus years. So it's very much entrenched in my family and my family's history. It's a weird, complicated relationship that I have with this person that I played that also became me in a way. It was very weird. Complicated, why? I think it's complicated because as an actor, you're playing someone, but you also use your own stuff and your own vulnerability to make that person real and honest and real to you. Um, so that's why it's complicated, you know? You're like, at what point are you like, who's Rose and who's Kelly? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you hope, you know, young Asian American fans take from seeing you. I am so excited for young kids to know that they can exist and they have the ability to do whatever they want. And I think we're living in such a cool time. We have like Constance and Aquafina and Jabba Chan and Jessica Henwick and all these like incredibly talented people. It feels like our time, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm such like I'm such a fan of all of these incredible women. I mean, I wish I grew up during this time. It'd be so rad. <laughs> Do you think your conception of yourself um, would be different today had you been able to see someone like Rose Tico? Yes, absolutely. How? I think that there would be a subconscious confidence that I wasn't even aware of that I don't know if I have, if that makes sense. I think that I, I think that as a person who doesn't see herself in a space that other people have seen themselves in since they were children. I think I have to work harder to be confident in those spaces. People talk about being Asian a lot. I also think there are, you know, being a woman is a thing. It like in this space or being conventionally attractive, like all these other things that make you feel other and different. And I cannot wait to see what this next generation does because it's like the rules that we grew up believing are so, they're lies. 